What's up YouTube? I'm Kimberly B as you can clearly see below and today I'll be demonstrating to you guys how I achieved this look. I did my own individual crochet locks and I did the individual method. So I will be demonstrating to you guys how to do the crocheting method as well as making sure that your natural hair is tucked within your lock. And I'll also be providing you guys with some tips on parting your hair into sections yourself. So let's get started. So what's up YouTube? I am Kimberly B, as you can clearly see below. And today I'm coming to you guys looking a hot mess with disgustingly dirty hair that you can literally see the dirt in. Um, and I'm going to be giving myself a brand new hairstyle. Today I'll be showing you guys how I do my crochet goddess locks. And I'll also inform you guys of the hair I'm using. So let's jump right on into that. So in all, I purchased a total of five packs of hair, but when I went to do the style, I only ended up using three packs of the five. I had three packs of the Zero T27, which is this light blonde color that I'm showing you guys right now. Also, I had one pack of a color four, and this is what it's looking like. It's like a really rich dark brown. And then lastly, my fifth pack was this Zero T30 color and it's a brown color and here in this clip you can see what that 0T 330 not 330 but 0T 30 is looking like out of the pack and as well throughout the video you'll be able to see what the other colors look like too you just want to be in the video huh come here come here Pupu. you guys I got a cat by the way his name is Simba and he's about seven weeks old now six weeks You can always check your work when it comes to your parts using a handheld mirror. Um, Walmart mirror, you can actually get one that's lighter than this because this one has a base. And all this portion of the styling took me about six hours in order for me to finish doing the individual braids over my whole entire head. Um, as you can see continually, I keep using that mirror and I have a mirror in front of me. That is the only way that I'm able to really see what I have done and I also do it just by feel. So you have to touch your head, feel where your parts are as well. Focus on having a steady arm as you go down the back of your head in order to do your parts and make sure you're always checking your work. And that's just the way that I'm able to braid on the back of my head because it is kind of complicated so of course if you have help you might as well just take it but I don't so I have to make it do what it do with my handheld mirror and it works though honestly you know um, it's just really after doing so much practice and doing it for a while like you can kind of tell by feel in the feel of the way that your comb is going down the back of your scalp on whether or not your part is relatively straight or not so once again you just have to keep practicing and using that mirror having one in front of you and one in the back of you and just doing your best to keep a steady hand as you do your parts And as you can see, once you get towards the front of your head, it's so much more simple than, um, as well, a good tip when you're, you're when, ugh, I cannot talk. <laughs> when you are braiding your hair in the front, those front braids, if you want baby hairs, do not sit up there and braid your little baby hairs up with your regular braid because you're not going to be able to have anything to work with. And then as well, I don't think it's good in general to braid your baby hairs in there because they're baby hairs, you know, you don't want to rip off your edges or anything like that. So make sure that you are being gentle in the front, like you want it to be tight enough, but be gentle as well. And don't braid up your baby hairs. So I have just now finished doing my individual plaits, um, if that's what you want to call it. I think that's the word, but this is what my hair is looking like. Um, the back, I did my best that I could with doing fairly equal parting. Um, I'm sure it's not going to be like perfect, but yeah, so, well, I'm sure it's probably not perfect. 
Yeah, let me go like this. So y'all can see. I'm gonna take that thing off of my scissors ain't committed. Okay, y'all, anyways, though, this is what my hair is looking like. Everything is braided up and it's ready. Um, as well, a tip that I have when you're going to do your braids, you wanna make sure that you get them kinda as low as you can so that the parting area isn't just like loose, loosey goosey, but yeah. Hey guys, so basically this is day two. As you can see, I'm literally nearly almost completely done with my hair. Um, you guys, I've just been toggling back and forth between three packs only. So I haven't even used three packs total yet. Oh shoot, that was pretty bad. <laughs> Finish pulling our Okay, y'all. Usually, it don't it don't have, it don't happen like this. It's just because I'm recording. Oh my God, what what did I do? So hey, you guys. Basically, it's time for me to demonstrate how I actually attach my locks. So let's get right into it. You're just gonna need your looped lock piece of hair as well as your crochet. I used to call it a crotchet hook. So what is a crotchet? Okay. Anyways, we're gonna go up underneath our plait. Try to get it in the center if you can. We're going right up underneath there. Next, we are gonna take our looped in and we're gonna apply that to the hook. You see, we just simply placed our looped in of hair onto the hook. Next, close it. Close that hook. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and pull it up underneath that braided little plait area okay so now we're taking our looped in we're gonna push it toward the back of our crochet tool now taking a piece of the end of our piece of crochet lock hair we're gonna place that onto our hook okay now the next step close it so we can hang on to it while we pull the end of the lock through the loop of the lock. Pull it on through. All right, at this point you can take this off and we're just gonna go ahead and simply tighten it. Okay. So there you go, I've tightened my lock so now we have our piece of braided hair as well as the lock. Now next, this is the part that gets a little tricky and it's a little tedious and annoying, I will say, but we're gonna make it work. I found a little solution to my issue. Now, typically you'll take an open hook and you'll, one thing you can do is kind of like measure like where you should insert it, like where the end of your braid is gonna be at but it really doesn't matter as long as you can get the braid in, but of course you wanna get as much braid in as you can. So basically what I'm doing is I'm inserting my open hook into the center of the lock. And what you wanna do is use your fingers in order to try to guide it through up to the top of the lock. But a lot of times this doesn't work out that simple. A lot of times the hook will end up coming out prematurely through the center of the lock and it's so annoying, but if it does happen and it just keeps happening, I have a little solution. But in this instance, it seems like I got lucky and I was able to guide my crochet tool up through the top of the area. And you also wanna make sure the end of the, of the latch piece is hanging out as well too, so you can utilize that. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece, my natural hair and I'm gonna attach the end of that to the hook. Now my hair is kind of short, so sometimes it's kind of hard to keep it on there as well too. But um, other than that, we're gonna go ahead and close that latch and you're gonna pull it through. And that's how you get your natural hair within there. But this is what I'm talking about. Like half of the time, the whole entire braid will not stay and go in there but what you can do because of these are locks you can open them up and you could literally tuck it in there but what you want to do is you want to make sure that once you go to tuck your tuck the ends of your hair in that you're twisting it in the direction that the lock goes so 
I just went ahead and I opened it. I tucked the last little end piece of my hair in there and then I'm twisting it so that I could. All right, y'all, so this concludes my tutorial. I hope that you were able to take something from it and hopefully it assists you when you're creating your own styles for yourself. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everybody that has subscribed and thank you just so much for even watching. Leave me some comments and suggestions in the bottom of the description box and I will see you guys next time. Bye.